All right. We're recording. You're all set. Have a great meeting, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of governance organization and legislation to order. It's October 21. According to my watch, it's exactly 10.30 in the morning. Um, and pursuant to Governor Make Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted via remote participation. And just uh, for the sake of uh, uh, doing it right, I'm going to just check in with all my colleagues, make sure we all can be seen and be heard. So Lynn? Here. Okay, and Mandy? Here. And Andy? Here. Okay, thank you. Um, Pat is uh, not available today. She had an emergency and so she is not with us. So it'll be just the four of us today. And um, a couple of quick things I wanna to touch on before we turn to the really the main item, perhaps the sole item for today's discussion. Um, I did send uh, to KP Law the um, facial recognition bylaw. Um, Paul confirmed that with me, I think yesterday. So um, it's been sent to them for legal review. And as soon as it comes back, um, then we would look at it. Um, that makes sense to me. I think we agreed that it, it makes sense to send it out for legal review first. But again, that's we can discuss that if you wish. Anyway, I did send it out. Um, and we still have three questions, uh, two of them from uh, our discussion and one from uh, Councilor Brewer um, that I have sent through Paul to KP Law. And as you might not be surprised, we haven't heard back. Um, they were minor matters related in particularly for us. We had asked, uh, there was a question about successors in interest. You wanted the language looked at and um, also you'd made a slight change. Um, and so anyway, they were all sent, uh, at least I assume they were. I'm gonna check again. Um, how important are those to the sponsors? Um, I, I can really press Paul or I can just remind him. Um, so we had, and then the Alyssa question was, was I reached out to Alyssa and tried to frame it um, and then I sent that as well. So um, uh, for the questions we had, any uh, on scale of one to 10 uh, must have an answer before uh, the second reading. I mean, obviously after the second reading it's moot, so. I, I think we have, I personally wanna see an answer to all of the questions. And okay, all right, good. Then I will press Paul later today or just, I'm not pressing him, but I will just remind him and, and uh, make sure um, that he has sent them in oh, that. Uh, but Mandy Joe's the sponsor. So Mandy right. Joe. Wanted yeah, to I, from the sponsor's point of view, I don't think it's pressing. Um, you know, we, I think it would be nice to have the answers, but I, I wouldn't, sure. you know, I, I don't see any need to not move forward without right. the answers. It's right. a bylaw. Yeah. If we get answers that are like, ah, we can always change it. And it's just a two week delay, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and given that some of it we're not in the middle of contracting for construction yet, so um, good. Well, no, I'm gonna, we we'll get back to have, we have three weeks till the next meeting. Right. So well, would... they've had at least three weeks since that those questions were sent out. So uh, at least assuming they were sent out, Paul usually gets back to me, um, but I will double check on that. But yeah, I, yeah, I. And are there any, were there any questions from the other night that need to go to legal? I don't think so, Mandy. I don't know. I didn't have any noted. No. This all came. And uh, Mandy Joe, you and I haven't talked about what those questions were and how we're getting answers, but do you want to use this opportunity now? Oh, huh? <laughs> what, what, what? There were three questions um, at, during the bylaw. One was from Evan. Um, and I, I think we've figured out who's doing what and it's getting taken care of. I don't okay. think we need to take GOL time for that. Okay. All right. I just, I just want to make sure we're, we have clear sailing when we get to the ninth. Okay. All right. Then uh, that's all I have as far as uh, preliminary business. Um, the main item for discussion is our continued uh, review of the town manager valuation process and the process for creating uh, the goals. And what we have, Lynn sent us a draft timeline for town manager review. And I think that is where we probably should begin. Um, 
and and then if we have time, we can go back to some of the other items and, and decide what uh, we want to do and how we want to proceed from there. Um, so I don't know if you want to put that up on the screen, Lynn, if you sure. can. Um, I have a copy, obviously, uh, maybe all of you have a copy in front of you. I uh, was sent by email to everyone last night. Um, and I don't think I actually got around to putting it in the packet. So um, it's on the screen and we'll make sure it goes in the packet. Okay. So just talk through to a couple things here as before we go forward. Anything in italics means it's this year. It's in the year you're in. Okay. And then later on, when you get down, I think I caught them all. Um, when you get down further, um, maybe everything ended up in italics. No, it's when you're not in italics, like coming year's goals, mm -hmm. then regular. So mm -hmm. that next year. And, you know, when we get more formal with this chart, I can code all of that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, I put something in here that was more formal with regard to reviewing um, the goals and also the, but the more formal thing I put in was reviewing, was having the manager discuss more about the goals. But let me just start with my four categories and maybe there's a fifth category. So one is just goal setting and review of goals, okay? Another one is the actual town manager's self-evaluation. Uh, the third is the issue of how do we get the data, instrument development and data collection. And the fourth one is the town manager's evaluation and contract, okay? And I'm not gonna, there's nothing perfect about this. It, I think it's always useful to have something to start with. So on the, uh, so on the, whoops, didn't help. So under goal setting, um, Again, this is where the italics versus the existing versus the, the non-italicized. So let's just skip for a moment. I suggested that we, in April, start discussing the coming year's goals, and that be a council discussion. And then we bring, then GOL brings that back as a draft, and it's reviewed in May and then finalized in June, which by then people will have at least, their head is in, well, what have we done? What have we not done? So I know one of the concerns is that we wanna make sure that if things weren't accomplished in one year, they're kind of carried over and this would be our opportunity. We may need to change the timeline. It may need to be that this comes more towards the end of a meeting. And the other option is we may want to shift this up earlier, but right in here is getting ready for the next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we, now we're in this year. Okay. So I suggested our, we are in the present year. Okay. Back in the year before we've set the goals. I've suggested that in September, we would review the goals. Three months later, we would review them again. And that three months after that, would we, we would review them again. And I started by having this be in January, but then I said, you know, an outgoing council really should review them as they leave. An ingoing council may decide they need to review them as they come in. Mm -hmm. So that is kind <clears throat> of my proposed goal setting, but the goal setting and the review of goals actually is very in sync with the next column, which is the town manager self-evaluation. Now, this is something we don't presently, we don't do this either, but we certainly don't do this. On the other hand, Paul's uh, town manager reports that he provides at every meeting essentially gives us updates, but they're not necessarily organized with relationship to the goals. So this was an idea that he would not have to do a big written process, but he could provide an oral update 
and then the next month the town council would review so that these two items would be in sync with us, with each other we under he gives us a sense of where he is we look at whether or not we need to make some adjustments mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> Same thing happens again. He gives us a sense of where he is in May. We have to make some adjustments. Um, same thing happens in August and September. This is an opportunity particularly here for us to take the goals that we did in June, have him say, you know, things have changed or boy, I think we need to add this or, you know, whatever. And this would be the place where the town council would then update the goals. Mm -hmm. Everybody questions so far? Okay. I have one very basic one, just to make sure we're clear about this. What is a year for the, um, what, what is the period of time that we're defining goals for because there's the calendar year, which it's not. Um, there's the fiscal year, and then there's the contract year because his contract expires at the end of August. Right. So I'm suggesting that we stay with the July 1 to June 30, but um, that may be something we want to debate. And the only reason to do that I'm just going to make this as, as notes. Uh, the reason to do that, you know, is to make sure that, you know, we do, um, um, that it's consistent with the fiscal year. Now, we could decide differently, but Andy, I just want to point out one of the things was when I got to this point, I said, oops, I need to go check the calendar. This is the point at which we would complete the town manager's evaluation, okay? All the data is collected. And the one thing I wanna note is right now, the contract requires that if we don't intend to renew and give him a multi-year contract, the contract says that we must notify by June 3rd. So, because the contract itself ends in August. So, your question, I think, is totally appropriate. I think we want to discuss, do we keep the present year we use, do we keep, do we go August to August? But regardless of whatever we do, we have to do this notification by June 3rd if we're not going to give him another multi-year contract. That's why I included in the email I sent you both the contract and the charter, because in the contract, it refers directly to the charter. So, is that, so let's leave that as an open question. Yeah, we'll leave it as an open question because uh, looking back, we complete the evaluation in June. I believe I have, you have to go down a little bit. Yep. See that page. Okay. We, and so it's very yeah. close. That last year for the council, it'll be sitting at that point. The timeline would be very close between whether it's able to complete the evaluation prior to making the decision as to whether to offer an additional contract. Right, and if you'll recall last year, when or two, well, not just this past fall, but the fall before, um, the contract actually was different. We had to essentially give him almost a, a year's notice. And I was actually, when I went back and looked at the present contract, I'm going, my God, that's a short notice. And I actually sent Paul an email and said, listen, don't panic, but I just want to check this is what your contract says. And he says, you're right. His previous contract had a much longer notice of, of um, intent not to review. And professionally, I would expect, I think 
this is a mistake in the present contract. I should have been given the notice. Yeah, of course, I wasn't involved in the present contract. I negotiated the prior contract. And the reason for that long period had to do with uh, the question of whether the voters were going to approve a change in government and what the manager's role would be, if any, in the new contract. So um, it was a very difficult uh, topic to work through in that negotiation, but it's totally irrelevant to where we are now. Right. I, I just think that professionally, um, and if you look at the clauses in his contract in terms of how much severance he gets, each year he gets additional severance because, you know, when it's basically um, the higher your salary is, the more time they assume you need to find a job to replace your existing job. That's the measure. So let me just, let me finish this and then let's talk about the whole process. Um, so then there's the whole issue of the data and we do need to review and redraft. I think we need a new survey for um, staff. I personally think we need a new uh, a new process for how we do, um, not a new, but a, an additionally revised process for how we do the public, which includes both committees and general public. And I think it has to be something where we give them more of a rating scale because right now what we get is a bunch of, you know, words and we all look at those, um, but nevertheless. So basically I suggested that this February, we at a minimum February, should start looking at the collection instruments, finalize them and distribute them as early as April, which by then people have a sense of how the year is going. The biggest problem they have at this point is looking at the financials and then distribute, make sure it's all back and it gives counselors this month. Now, the biggest problem here is this is the month that the council does the budget. And for the finance committee, this is the month that they're swamped. So I, the whole, you know, we talked about that last time. Um, and that's, I, I should, probably should have in finalized contract. Okay. All right. So I, my goal today for us was to basically do exactly what Andy started doing. And that is, you know, talk about it as a whole concept, not, you know, don't get, don't try to get into the instruments or anything else. Just talk about it as a whole concept. Okay. I think part of the uh, the concept issue, a big part of it is is just the whole timing, and being clear on it, and everyone being clear on who's um, doing what at what time, and um, so that that is a big important step. Um, I think my general view is that we over evaluate. But I, that, I'm not sure that even has a place here. Um, in other words, I'd like to see some of this simplified. But um, the most important thing beyond is just getting it, as you've been doing, getting a process in place that has specific dates. And then I assume the, the president, but also perhaps the chair of GOL would be keeping an eye on this. In other words, keeping track of deadlines and so on. Um, assuming we don't get a problem with the council saying, well, why is GOL doing this? Um, I don't think any of them are gonna rush forward to offer to do it. Um, and I thought the, the, the goal is to sort of take some of the burden off the president. 
whoever I, the president may be. I um, thought there were several goals. One is to take some of the burden off of the president, but I think the other goal was to make sure that the president isn't looking at this with a single eye, that there's right. other people yes. really looking at this. And I, I personally think having GOL uh, get this responsibility is fine. If the council at some point wants to change that process, that's their decision. But right now they gave it to GOL. Right. Right. I mean, I like the way um, you have inserted a place for the manager to um, do a kind of review of or status review of goals to the council. And I, I do wonder, I'm sure we all wonder, you know, practically how this will actually happen given how our meetings go. Um, usually when we get to Paul, um, he has like three minutes to do his report and then people ask him questions. But this I assume would have to be a formal agenda item and he would have a few minutes to, um, and then there'd be questions. But I like that. And it also introduces the, the, the thought that had come along that, okay, we set these goals, but we should review them occasionally. So this puts that in the process. Um, I guess three times a year is, 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 is not too much? It's, um, it's basically every quarter. Yeah. So, and, and it gives you an opportunity to, um, so you, while, right before you start discussing next year's goals, he presents in February, the council reviews them, and then you start discussing them. So, I mean, it, and I didn't, I didn't try to nail this down to weeks because first of all, the years change. And second of all, it's going to depend on the meetings within the month, within the years. Mandy Jo has her hand up. Sure, Mandy. A couple things. I, I, I might be with George on over reviewing here. Um, three, I mean, we're essentially dealing with goals four times a year. Um, that seems like a lot to me, especially if that's not just a status update from the manager, that's a potential changing of goals every three months. You know, at that point, what's our manager supposed to do to focus on stuff if every three months one could be deleted and another one added? And and that I don't think that gives a lot of consistency. I think I'd rather see it go down to, I, I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm it's, it's, the, it's the oral presentation regarding the status that I'm really concerned about. I think it's more of the reviewing them after that presentation to say, well, should we change them or not? Because um, if we start changing them every quarter, our poor manager is gonna, you know, like go out of his mind on what's he actually supposed to be doing, um, and the staff's gonna do that. So, I, I think I'd almost either go to just a twice a year review, you know, a mid year review of goals, whether that be in December for a continuing council or January at the very beginning of a new council's term. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it could always be January if we're passing in June or late December if we're continuing. Maybe reports three to two other times. So sort of a third of the year, every four months instead of every three months. But I, I think there's just too much in terms of reviewing going on. Um, my, I do, my, by I, the way, here was that they're not gonna change them. They're just gonna say, yeah, well, you're on, on target, however, and I, pardon me for interrupting, but for instance, if we had set the goals, we're, say we were at fin been finished with the goals in May or something, we would have had to do some revision. So you could also say it's maybe twice a year or any other time as needed. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just think if we're doing too much, we're not gonna get anywhere. Um, I like the timeline for setting the goals. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure we need three months to do it. I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking late April is when we start the discussion, potentially even in early May, because if we're aiming for end of June adoption, um, you probably, I, I think we did it in six weeks this year. And if, and that was with a whole new document um, and 
and um, uh, format. So it could probably be consolidated into two months instead of three um, in terms of the April, May, June goal setting and review. The instrument development and data, you know, I, I've got some of the same concerns I think that Andy has, you know, at the same time, I think it would be good to have stuff finalized and compensation finalized in June because then we can know it's in the budget. Right now, Paul's just sort of creating his own salary in the budget without any knowledge <laughs> as to what we're going to do with it. Um, so to have that there, I'm not so concerned about it not being sort of in line with the actual contract time because when you vote it you can just say effective in august or whatever at the new contract date um in terms of consolidation what i was saying with goal setting i think we can also consolidate the instrument development or at least the data collection i, I think it would be nice to talk about how long people need to respond to surveys and how long the counselors need. I sometimes feel like we're dragging this out. We've got a self-evaluation done five weeks or so before we have to complete ours. It sits in an inbox where you've read it, you get the boards and committees well before we're thinking about ours. And I almost feel like there's too much time in between everything. So I, I think a discussion of how long we need between sending out surveys and getting them back and when we want the self-evaluation back and compared to when the counselors are filling stuff out. Because right now that's one of the first things that comes through before we've even seen board and committee responses. Uh, so I think it, it can probably be consolidated a little bit better. Um, the, the problem I probably did this here like this is because I think this year we do need to do a comprehensive review. But Andy, you have your hand up. Yeah, I mean, there are several things. One is I uh, uh, appreciate that Mandy brought up the uh, question of uh, the town manager's salary and the budget and how that's determined. Uh, in reality, the whole budget process is going to be hard to sync with this anyway. And I think we're not going to be able to do it. We'll go crazy if we try and do it because the town manager has to actually deliver the budget on May 1st. And then he, and so he's got to be working on the budget and developing the budget prior to May 1st. So he's the whole budget process just doesn't sync with this at all. And I don't think uh, we're going to make it uh, work together uh, very well, but I don't think he's going to do anything uh, well, I mean, if we have a manager that does anything that's totally crazy in this regard, then that's something we ought to be evaluating them about. Uh, and uh, so that was sort of one topic that I was thinking about. Another thing that uh, to pick up on what, again, what Mandy said and where we are is I think that it's important that we distinguish between what it is to review performance on goals and how the goals are going in the revision of goals. And that we actually come out with a, just a point blank statement that revision of goals is, uh, can happen at any appropriate time by mutual agreement with the town manager uh, and, but that there's not an automatic process to to, that that has to happen, and I was, and I always go back to think about the year that um, just passed because if we had had any sense of it, <clears throat> we would have, uh, when COVID blew up, um, said, "Hey, we got to review the goals because COVID is now the a major goal that was unanticipated and." what needs to come off the plate in order to assure that there's time to deal with what is uh, now the current crisis. And um, I think that that would have been an appreciated conversation by all parties had we done that. And so looking at it, we might want to think about it. The last thing that in going into all of this is that the history of this, um, was that you'd complete an evaluation and that that would inform the goal setting process for the next year. 
And uh, I think what we're doing now is decoupling that. And uh, my uh, other uh, for counselor, who's a former select board member, might have problems with that. I think there's other counselors that might have problems with that too. Um, I'm sorry, I was trying to just make this more of a look at progress versus make it sound like you're gonna redo. And that was without going back to one of Mandy's points, which was to not do it as often. Um, I think that there are gonna be counselors who um, feel like they're gonna say here in March, uh, I have no idea until I do the evaluation. Or in April, they're gonna say that. And, you know, and then one of the reasons why once we do the evaluation, I suggested that we do an update here was because that would be the time to change or tweak any goals. I totally agree there's too many of these, but I was trying to also think about council years and changes in council. And when, I mean, is this something a brand new council should do in January? Or is this something an outgoing council should do in December? That was one of my driving forces. Yeah, Mandy Jo. So in election years, I think a new council will want to look at the goals because depending on what people ran on and whether there's there's a potential for a massive change in counselors with their own priorities that they want reflected near immediately in the goals. They don't wanna to have to wait six months for that. Which I think is why I was saying in a continuing year, maybe you do that in December, uh, November, December, but in an election year, when the new council's coming in, maybe it's saved for late January, um, where the first or second January meeting is when Paul reports on his progress on the goals, puts it on an agenda, and then the council can talk about them at that time. I also don't know whether the oral presentation regarding the status, if it really is just a review and not a revision needs to be at a different time than the actual review of the goals. I think they can be the same meeting um, where you report on the status and say, okay. And, and it's just, it, it's as George was saying, it's not part of the town manager's report. It's an agenda item and they're the same meeting. So if I move this to here, get rid of this. I mean, we could also put it all back in November too, just to be also getting ready to write a footnote. Okay. And then what you're also saying is, okay, and it's just, um, saying that this would move to here. And let's, then I want to come back to whether or not this is done. And then this would move. To here, except in an election year, this would um, move to January. It's January in years the new council is inaugurated or sworn in. when a new council is seated, yeah. Right. Okay. It's gonna be every other year. I'm sorry? It's gonna be every other year, right? That's right. So we've, we've got three year terms, but from now on it's two. So every other year, you would have a slightly, slightly different goal setting calendar. It wouldn't be hugely different, but I think you're, you're all right that um, 
in a, in a new council year, they should review the goals in Jan they should be done in January. Joe, you suggested that in May, I'm, I'm trying to give a little wiggle room here only because um, I was actually amazed at how many times we had to bring the council back, the goals back to the council. And that was when we were meeting like every week, except for holidays. And it took, if we had spread it out over a regular meeting twice a month, it would have probably gone out. But I, I mean, I could stay, I could put. Um, I, I guess I'm thinking in many years, the goals may not change that much. Um, you know, we had a whole new document and we really only focused on one or two of those goals in all of those meetings. So if you'd start early, if, if you start with a council discussion, which is not what we did this year, we started with a GOL presentation of goals. Um, you might be able to minimize some of that back and forth because you'll have a better idea of what might get added or whether anything is getting added. And if nothing's getting added, I think it'll go fairly quickly. So in this case, I wonder if this should be moved to April and then move this to May. You're talking about the progress? Yeah. I mean, to me, that makes sense to put those those as close. I mean, it's it's sort of that self-evaluation almost. Right. Because the self-evaluation, I mean, relates to the goals and the contract, so. Yeah, that's was, was a good point. So we have the discussion of how is this gone? That informs the goals discussion. And meantime, it also gives the town manager a little bit of a tip of saying, you know, on this particular goal, people are gonna say, you didn't really reach it. On this one, you know, so those are two options. I guess the question goes back to what Andy was saying is, what's the self-evaluation for? Is it for contract purposes or is it for goals and what are the goals for? Does it relate to the contract negotiation? Does, does column B relate to column E and which one does the self-evaluation relate to? I believe that this relates to this and that this is the only time you in writing ask the manager to talk about goals. Which means it relates to column B though, because they'll be talking about Coming. all the goals. So it, this relates to this, this relates to this, and this relates to this. Okay, so the self-evaluation relates to the prior goals instead of the, That's right. the new goals. I yeah. Maybe I need to do more, maybe even make these bold or something as well so that they stick out more well, and, or or color code what goes to what yeah. thing and maybe do it by fiscal year instead of january to december maybe order it july to june because i think that'll be a little clearer then yeah okay What I'm hearing in broad outline is that we are not going to be, we're gonna do as a council, a sort of review of goals once a year, basically, or halfway through the year. So we set them and then six months later, December, whatever, we come back to them formally. Now we can do it anytime, that's perfectly correct but do we want to have a formal, you know, in the process, I'd say the six, rather than doing quarterly or whatever, but just, I, I like the idea of not doing it that often because it can be done anytime in theory, right? But formally we would do that in December as a council, halfway through, just right. sort of checking well, me, in. And I don't, I, I don't know what I just did, but don't worry about it. Um, so 
we would remove this review and presentation and just say that it either happens in December with an existing council or in January with a new council. So just get rid of these two. Mm -hmm. Yes? That would be my, my feeling it is the less, less is more. I don't know how the others feel. Less of the reviewing of the goals? Well, but certainly by the council, but also with the town manager coming and having to do formal um, three times a year. Um, again, I just, it's out there for discussion. Do you, do you wanna hear from him three times a year as an agenda item um, on the goals themselves? Or do you wanna hear from him at the, at the halfway points such as the council would do it? So is he gonna weigh in three times a year and we do it once formally and everything else is left in? I mean, we can do it anytime, but that would be the formal process. Or would you prefer that he and the council be in sync? Um, that when we do our six month review, he also, it would be part of a presentation where he would give his update. I'm just thinking practically in terms of time and energy. I, I think that it practically in terms of time and energy, it doesn't make sense to do it more than twice a year um, because it really is hard to distinguish between the review of the goals and self-evaluation. They're really the same thing. Right. Because, and uh, yeah. I don't know that it, it adds a lot and as far as the revision of the goals, I'm still back to where I was, is that uh, the goals, as I recall, the, it was either in the contract or um, it was in, but it was in one of the documents I read this morning, was talking about it being a mutual product of the manager and the council. So it really is by agreement that you revise goals. And I don't know that that needs to be an automatic process as much as um, it, if, it's, if the need is identified and there's agreement to revise, you do it. It has to be agreement. Well I don't, if I understand you, Andy, my, my sense is that we set the goals, the manager then carries them out. Um, obviously, if he has a, 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 you know, if he has a problem with it, he will articulate it. But in my sense is he looks to us to tell him where we're supposed to be going. Um, it is a mutual process. It's not just, you know, we hand down dictates, but um, it's essentially on us as a body of 13 to figure out where we want to go. I think that we need to talk about that, I hope either today or some point, because I think that's extremely difficult. Um, and, you know, it's seven drafts. I mean, maybe we did it quicker this time, but I, I'm not optimistic that it's going to go so easily. Um, but uh, we're supposed to come up with the, 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 uh, the goals and then he's supposed to carry them out. Um, in the contract section, 4.2, annually the council and the town manager shall define and generally prioritize in writing the goals and objectives which they determine necessary to the proper operation of the town and the attainment of the council's policy objectives. It's a joint process. The council and the town manager shall define. And that's in the contract. That's in that's the contract. That's not in the charter. It is in the charter. It is in the charter. Okay. Mm. I don't think so. The, the charter has nothing about goals. The charter just says we have to review, evaluate the manager on a yearly basis. Right. Yeah. So I, I would question that contract language myself, but that's, you know, if that's the contract, that's what it is. Um, that shows you how closely I read the contract. Um, but um, anyway. Can I? Um just weigh in here a moment because having been involved twice now in the goal setting since we started the council right. um, we actually have done this two different ways 
the year that we had the sub, you know, the separate committee, um, we had several meetings where Paul interacted with us. And it was a much more of a back and forth. Now, part of that was because of the makeup of the committee, part of it was because we had never done it before, et cetera. When we did it this year, we did not have that level of back and forth. And um, so I think it's a, I, it is in the, it's either in the contract or the charter, I guess it's in the contract that it should be mutual. And um, I'm not clear. I don't, I think if we did anything this year it was we went to the, a little bit to the other side of not being as mutual, but I also felt Paul would have spoken up at any point in time and said, I don't agree with this. At key points, he was at GOL meetings participating, yeah. and he was the one who uh, very much uh, was supportive of the direction that we were taking as far as how we were defining goals. Uh, then Mandy took that conversation and produced the draft. And I agree if he had been unhappy with it, he would have said so. But I think that she was following what had come out of a meeting in which he was a part active participant. Yeah. I agree. Lynn might have a different perspective. Andy might have a different perspective. But what I've heard um, from him on a number of occasions is a request to us to tell uh, tell him where we want to go. And it's hard for 13 of us to come to that, but we did to some degree with this current set. But my sense has always been, and it may be mistaken, but when I when he comes to us, he always is saying, I need to hear from you where you want to go. Tell me what your goals are. And then I will carry those out and, and pass them on to staff. Staff wants to know where we're going to. Um, it is mutual to I agree to a certain extent, but my sense has always been, and it may be mistaken, that it's really our job, 13 of us, to figure out what we think, where we think the town should be going, and it's Paul's job to execute that. We are the vision body. He is the executive, ex executor. Um, and I believe that when we came up with, or when Mandy Joe and then we, you know, agreed to a set of policy goals and then management goals, I think he really viewed the policy goals as kind of our vision. Yes. And so I don't, I'm not criticizing how it happened this year. No, I nor I, no, that no. other year, frankly, was laborious. And I mean, people wanted to get down to, well, what was he going to show us as evidence? Right, right. We just didn't do that this year, and I'm frankly quite glad we didn't. I never, I felt that this year's pro, this year's set of goals was much more reasonable in terms of not being as prescriptive. Right. The prescriptive nature of goals, I think, when you're dealing with as high a level of position as Paul is in, is really not appropriate. I agree. And uh, the other thing, this gets back to something that I maybe is to test for George where you are at, but um, the, you, if you don't have the manager as an active participant in the process and the way it's described in the contract, then it's placing um, the possibility of a future council uh, defining goals that um, the manager thinks are unattainable and uh, whether that's reasonable to, to negotiate, to establish goals that he's not a participant in to say, hey, wait a minute, that's just not an attainable thing. Uh, I, it just doesn't strike me as reasonable. No, I, I certainly agree he should be a participant. I'm not saying that, but I guess what I am saying is the buck stops with us, not with him. If the if the if the train goes off the rails, it's our it's the up it's 13 of us that are responsible, right? And you know maybe he you know whoever the town manager is um, has responsibilities to be sure, 
but the, the big picture is up to us, not not to the town manager. But you're, I do agree, I, absolutely, you should be part of the process. But um, in the end, maybe it's just a philosophical point, really, but um, we're supposed to be, we're the vision people, for better or worse. He has a role in it, yes, and certainly it's, it, he should be part of it, yes. But uh, in the end, we're the ones who get elected and unelected, and we're the ones who are responsible for that vision. I don't think it changes anything. I think the process is, you know, he should be involved. His presence at GOL was great. Um, I think we're more concerned with, I, my concern is how we get 13 people um, in the space of a month or two to uh, come up with, with a set of goals they can all live with. We went through seven drafts this time. Um, maybe that's just the way it has to be. I've always thought that it made sense to have some kind of, of you know, uh, uh, retreat um, but given the time demands on all of us, maybe that's just, just not possible. So we do it in council and we do it by going back and forth with GOL. And so Mandy writes draft three, draft four, draft five, draft six, draft seven. And, you know, it, it's, it had to be done. I mean, it, it was, and I think in the end, it, it, worked out, it worked out okay. But it took an enormous amount of time and energy. And we're trying to figure out a way to make it, if possible, a little less uh, difficult and painful. Um, and maybe there's no way to do that. But um, no, I agree. The town manager needs to be involved. I'm not questioning that. Um, so maybe it's just a philosophical point. And then there's the other question that comes up in this conversation, which is what happens when a new council comes in and how much should we create a process for the new council to essentially redo goals when you're so far into a year. Uh, and of course, the select board struggled with that in the last round, in its last round as to what was it going to put into performance goals and how it was going to anticipate the transition. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why you raised the question up here how should a year be defined? And, you know, I can argue this one both ways. I could argue it that the prior council has a responsibility to leave things in a nice manner and yet not dictate to the future council. And yet, you know, two years is really a short time. We, uh, you know, it's I, I mean that so when I was doing research on like goal documents, a lot of towns were moving towards in, in manager council systems were moving towards two or three year goals, not one year goals um, with revisions throughout, but recognizing that something like our climate action goal that we have as a policy goal isn't going to be complete in a year. You know, we're, it might not, it's not going to be complete in two years, depending on what you're doing. Um, you know, so the question is what, it's why I like the separation between policy and management goals, because the management goals are something that I foresee basically staying the same year on year out with some of those sub goals or objectives, you know, some of those one, twos and threes changing, depending on what the flavor of the year is in terms of, do we want to focus on a or B in terms of some of that, but most of those I think are going to stay the same. Um, but it, it's a question of, should we be looking at two year goals where you don't, where you just, you know, you review them every six months, but you're not, you know, so you're revising it every six months, but you're recognizing that these are not one year goals. Um, at the same time, if you get a brand new council in January, are they ready to set two year goals? Um, probably not. Um, and that might not be what they want to spend their first two months doing. Um, so leaving it's them nice. with a set of goals that is a yearly set of goals that they can at least talk about and start thinking about and maybe change immediately, but get four months in before they're really looking at them might be best. I think the one example that I can think of, and I won't specifically name what it is, but if a group of people chose to run for council because they wanted to achieve a major change in, in something and 
they sold that to the public and the public elected a majority that believes that that's what should be done, there will be um, the demand to do it. And um, just the way it is. Right, right. I don't think there's any process that you can create to, to um, uh, not, uh, would we want, one wouldn't want to even prevent that. If the voters have decided and they've elected them, then the council is going to do what it's going to do. So I think we just want a basic process that gives a sense of order to what can become a disorderly thing and, and just pass it on to the next uh, council. And um, when they're elected and, and in January, if they've suddenly got a mandate from the voters to do something totally different that was not in the previous, you know, in that year's set of goals, they're perfectly free to, to you know, say to the town manager, this is what we want you to do. And, and it's starting right now. Um, so I don't think we need to build a process for that. It, it, it's already there. Um, what we want is just a process for the larger uh, issue of, of just evaluation and so goal setting in general. And I don't think we need to overthink it. Um, uh, if we're happy with the process and, and the calendar, I like the idea of a calendar that's, that's um, uh, you know, follows the fiscal year. I think, and as many suggested, make it whatever it is, it's clearest and, and most uh, basic form. And if we can get that, then we, out of the rest of this, you know, we can't, we, nothing we can do about it anyway, and it's silly to worry about it. Um, and, and hopefully it'll help them. The in next the council will come in and throw out the whole damn thing. Yeah, exactly, right. I mean, right, anything could happen. We just, I think, I don't think that would happen, but they certainly could change a goal. They could, they could decide we wanna, you know, whatever. And um, that's their right. Yeah, wow. actually, uh, when you think about it, though, it's, it's not likely to happen. I think that uh, one thing I think we should return to is Mandy's point about whether goals should be set in two-year period mm -hmm. that coincide with council terms. Uh, and uh, if you put into the document that um, the goals will be the two-year goals will be established in May. Um, that for, for most new councils, they're going to come in and say, "Okay, well, that's what the process is," and it's gonna, they're going to need some time to work it out anyway and to explore if it's a major goal change. Um, I think the most reasonable people would say we've been elected, we have the power to do this, this is what we want to do, but they're not going to question the timetable. And if they do, so be it. Yeah. So I think we just, yeah. I mean, if you, if you have a large turnover in the council, you could, and, and that would happen for any number of reasons, but one reason it might happen is because people are pretty pissed at how the last councils worked and now have some very clear and definite changes in goals that they want to see, they're going to come in and throw this whole thing out anyway. So, um, but if you, you know, if you have a council election and, you know, there's not even a majority change, then multiple year goals make enormous sense. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. I, I, I hear Bandy's point, it makes sense. And we have other towns and cities perhaps going towards it, but um, not all the goals would fit this. Some goals would just be, you know, reasonably thought of as say one year goals. Um, and some of the goals, you know, like climate change and some of, certainly some of the ones that we've put in, I mean, the, I think all of the ones pretty much that we put in are definitely multi-year goals, more than even two years. Um, so I'm wondering, um, you know, especially given our term is only two years to begin with uh, in the future, uh, how much do we really want to put into, you know, I mean, in the actual document, would you say, and this is a two-year goal, when you know, in fact, it's really like a 10-year goal or, a, you know, it will take a long time for us to do some of these things. Um, how important is it to have that stated, uh, other than just maybe just acknowledging that in a goals document, many of these are multi year um, it's a question. I just wonder. Um, I mean, I, I put out there that some councils do two, three year goals, whatever their term is, four years. Right. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it. <laughs> right. okay. You know, um, 
you know, we have a climate action goal. I, I worry that if you set and say a document is a two-year goal, the council is going to ignore it for two years. You know, um, at least if they're one-year goals, even with a plan like this, you're not ignoring it for two years. You're coming back to it every year, um, mm -hmm. even if you miss the six-month review or the three-month review. Um, and you don't feel as bad changing something and saying, you know, that. But I also think it allows for better check on progress to the goal. Um, you know, if you say it's a two year goal, you're less, I, I just feel like you're less likely a year in to say, well, you haven't made sufficient progress, you know, because, well, they've got another year left. Whereas even if we know climate action goals, you know, we have something working towards 2025, I think is one of the things that's in the climate action goals we passed the council a year and a half ago. Mm. Um, we can, every year we can look at that and say, how much progress has he made? Do we think we're still going to get there? And it, so I guess I would support single year goals, um, realizing that a council, a newly elected council may come in and throw them out, but that's, that's their prerogative. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, all we can do is leave it to them to do that if they want, but give them a timeline that makes sense if, if there isn't a big, you know, and, or how to do it, even if there is a big change, you know, they can look at this and say, oh, it probably takes six weeks to set goals, even if we start in January, you know, um, if, if they want to change them, they've still got a framework. Mm-hmm. When I think of our six policy goals, um, I'm trying to come up with the sixth one, but five, the five that I can think of right at the top of my head are definitely multi-year goals that, you know, it, it makes no sense to put a number to them. There might be some goal that would come along where it might make sense, but, um, and I think the idea of just, you know, treating them as year by year and seeing how are we doing. Some of these, it seems, it seems to me when I look at them, I think it's hard to see these changing over the next couple of years. Climate change is not gonna go away. Economic development is not going to go away. Um, maybe public safety and health might be a goal area that could change, and hopefully we'll finally get out of the COVID uh, universe. And um, public safety, we might find a way of, of addressing this that that becomes less contentious uh, with the community, so that that would could be changed or eliminated. But some of these, uh, you know, the capital projects, um, I, you know, we'd all like to think that right. That's a multi-year, so. That's um, the one I actually see changing because of the way we wrote it. We wrote it for planning a fiscal plan this year. Yeah. Um, and so when we get that, it'll change to presumably executing and potentially finding locations and stuff. Right, right. But, but it's still going to probably be it's around. It's going to be there, I assume. <laughs> right. right. Well, getting the buildings built is certainly going to be there. <laughs> I mean, I think the other thing is, and, and this is getting off the track, and we, we can pull it back, but, um, you know, how specific do we get? With I mean, Matt, Manny's right about the management side of things. I think that's been really the, the uh, uh, that's been handled very well. I think quite well. But with policy, how detailed? I mean, I've looked at. Uh, remember when we first were uh, before we were inaugurated, but we went through some training. And was it what, what was the city that or the town that the manager came from? Um, it was Franklin's Jeff Nutting. Franklin, yeah, and their goals were, I mean, it's like, you know, changing a, a stoplight or you're fixing a, I mean, it was very, very specific. Um, it wasn't quite maybe that detailed, but it's very concrete. So at the end of the year, either you did it or you didn't. And that was a goal, set of goals for that. I and mean, that's what he showed us, as I recall. They were, they were not the broad kind of goals that we've created. Um, how... Do people, I mean, what we do is we have these broad, what we've created at the moment and as, as a possible template, it's a broad set of goals. And then within that, and tied to specific, ideally specific council actions, votes, some kind of, you know, council decision or action or vote is ideally what we'd like as a put, right? Andy? Yeah, so I look at the, uh, the one that I'm looking at is the community health and safety, which yeah. has two parts to it. One has to do with COVID-19, and the other um, is in accordance with Council's vote on July 27, 2020, and in consultation with the Council and residents of Amherst, fully explore alternative options of providing services to respond to issues of homelessness, mental health, and other non-criminal uh, calls to emergency dispatch and present 
the results of the council no later than January 31, 2020. That was very specific. Right. So going forward as a, a model or template, we're trying to do both things, right? We're trying to, well, first of all, we're trying to make sure it's tied to some specific council action or decision because a number of suggestions were made during this process and they were set aside because everyone agreed that's not something the councils discussed or agreed upon. An individual counselor or counselors might like it, but since the council had not talked about it or voted on it or made any right public decision, that really was not appropriate for a goals document. At the same time, there was a desire, even on Paul's part to some degree, that there be specific things that it could actually write that could be measurable, quantifiable. Did you do this? Did you not do that? We're trying to do both, it seems, which is okay. I don't think that's right. Um, you have the broad goal and then you have some very specific actions within it. Um, that's kind of the model that we're trying to create. Certainly this version, this one we created here, um, I like, I imagine you all agreed to some degree, worked hard on it enough, right? Um, going forward, we're gonna to try to suggest the council, this is the way we suggest, we suggest. This is the way the council should try to go when it does create goal document. It has broad set tied to specific actions, ideally, right? So with capital projects, I mean, we I don't think we mentioned a specific, did we? A specific council decision or vote, but it's clearly been, right? That's everyone would agree that's something we've been dealing with. So it's tied to something we have done as a group and then specific items listed where appropriate inside of it. I, I did that so that if I, if necessary, I could bring up this year's performance goals. Right. So that yeah. we look at those. Um, um, yeah, I was just doing that. That's what I was flipping back and forth on my end. Right. Um, is it up there? Um, it is now, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first thing I would point out is the title is screwed up. And I uh, this is just a very picky <laughs> thing. Um, and I don't know where, I could not find this document um, in any public place um, at the moment uh, for, for residents to go read. Um, oh, I think it's on the town manager's web. Well, the one I found was, was older. Um, and also the titles, right? I mean, we never got around to actually getting, just making the slight change. So it actually reads <laughs> the town council uh, performance goals for the town manager. As I assume what we finally agreed is the title. Yeah. Uh, I think there's confusion yeah. on the part of the, uh, the of the clerk as to, and, and so it just never get changed. So the rest of it's fine. I think the rest of it is exactly the way it's supposed to be, but it is a bit embarrassing and we need to fix it to get the damn title right. Um, but, and also where it should be so, I mean, I would send my constituents say, well, what do you guys, here's our document. So where is it? Um, anyway, here it is. We need to fix the title. Um, and I think it's a great template or model for going forward. Okay. Yeah. So I will look on the town manager's page and see what's not listed there. Yeah, I, I think when I last checked, it was... Also try to find a Word document, whoever has it. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can reach out to Athena and, and as GOL chair and just ask her about that. I have no problem. And just say, you know, where is it and can we fix it? I probably have, I, I'm working on a Word document, my revision seven that was clean. I don't, it, it still had objectives, not goals yeah. on I, it. Yeah, that was a change we made during the meeting, as I recall. Yeah, so Athena should have the the final, final Word document. I probably didn't keep track of it in the council. That's meeting. all right. You have a thousand things. So I, I can reach out to her and just uh, make sure that it's fixed yeah. or that it, that it, the document is available to everybody and then making it available. It, um, it goes on the town manager's uh, page where they have both his evaluation stuff from the previous year and the upcoming goal. It is there, yes. Right. It it's should in this. Be. Yeah, it's in its form. So, yeah. yeah, we should need to replace it. So that's yeah. the right title. Right. Was there were there any other changes during the meeting that we're not showing here that anybody can remember? I 
I'd have I to thought, this, I thought this was the only one. I think. Okay. But Athena would have it. I mean, I mean, she's very good about it. I think this right. is just something that just got, uh, it was just confusing um, and just didn't get caught. But I think we certainly have some counselors who would love to see a much more detailed, you know, sort of one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, kind of document. And that's not the kind of document that we as a group agreed upon. And I think this is a good model going forward. Um, but if you look at them each individually, they're all multi-year goals. Ultimately, there was really only one counselor who kept going back to wanting more detail. Right. And, so a, minor, a very minority and, position. Yeah. And, yeah. and wanting to have goals stated in much more um, this is what I want to see kinds of ways. And that's, you know, ultimately that's my recollection of the discussion at the council. And I think that's where we got, we got caught because X wants this and Y wants that. And there's just no way you're going to get an agreement. And so, um, you know, you can't have a 13 person goals document that gets that specific because we just won't all agree on it. But we did agree, I thought on these six broad goals. And uh, I, mean, I just felt it was, in many ways, a remarkable accomplishment, um, given uh, 13 very strong-willed individuals who had never actually sat down and in, in another setting and talked about this, but did it um, in, in the public uh, in, at council meeting. I mean, we do it all in public, but we did it in a council meeting, by and large. Yep. I, I don't think we want to do it again, <laughs> at least not, like not through seven drafts. Right. I but, think. But I'm not sure that I want to do it at a retreat either, where um, if the goal is to essentially do the entire process in one retreat. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe a retreat's a bad idea. I just, I don't know. I just throw it out there. I mean, maybe this is the best, this is the only or best way to do it. I don't know how other towns do it, um, other cities do it. Do they, do they have a separate time where they sit down and talk or do they just hash it out the way we did um, and using this process? So we have this process and it will have the same, I assume same general result of multiple drafts. Um, it's hard to believe we would do this in one, one council meeting and everyone would go, yeah. Um, so there'd be multiple drafts and maybe that's just the way it has to be done. Um, how do people feel about retreats? Does that make sense? Is it, you know, we already have enough to do. Um, well, we'll find out when people respond since yeah. I polled for them. I haven't even polled for topics. Because you are planning a retreat. I, I think, Lynn, you did think that was something that, that makes sense for us to do at some well, point. Well, I think that Zoom retreats are really difficult. Yeah. And um, I think they're difficult for a couple of reasons. One is you just can't do it. I mean, it, uh, unlike a um, council meeting where you have a very clear agenda and you're going through and taking actions, you know, retreats are meant to be much more free flowing. So I've been advised by other people who've done retreats that we only do three hours max. Um, the second thing is that um, I think we could end up with a greater audience attendance than we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people can log in and sit at home. Or you know, not watch, frankly. They can well, just, I mean, you know, they can see how sausage is made. You know, it's a, it's not a pretty sight. But yeah. um, speaking of which, do we have any audience? Uh, we no. haven't. You no, know, I haven't seen anything. Um, Such an exciting committee. Um, anything else we want to look at with this? And then my next question is: What do you want to do with the calendar? Do we want to bring it back to this committee before we take it to the council? Do we want to take it to the council? How do you want to deal with that? I don't think we should take it to the council until we're happy with it. And we've seen it and we've gone through it and we've talked about it and we feel we can defend it against any, you know, um, so I would prefer it come back at least once for us for another review. Okay. I think for instance, it sounds like you're going to change the, the timeline from you're going to use the fiscal year we're going to remove um, some of the town manager self-evaluation. I mean, we're going to make some changes to it. Yeah. And I, I, I showed you 
Yeah, I, I think what we could see, I'd, I'd like to see it again instead of just over a screen share at another meeting. Pat can then weigh in because um, yes, we're yeah. missing Pat. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it would be easier understood if we actually put it ordered July to June instead of January to December. Okay. Um, All right. I know you did a lot of changes today. And I still would like to get back to my question about distribution and receipt of the data from staff, boards and committees, uh, residents, and even self-evaluation from the manager and whether we've got a better idea of how much time between them is needed. And right now it's just randomly in April, randomly in May, we're doing our thing in June, maybe a little bit more talk about how long we want them out there and what order we want them received in. You know, do we want staff before we want residents? Do we want residents, staff, and board committees all at the same time? When do we want Paul's self-evaluation as compared to all of that? And sort of what's the order? Oh, I just realized you're not seeing this. I'm writing myself notes. All right. Um, hold on. My sense was that you felt that this could be tightened, the timeline could be tightened. Yeah, I mean, I think we've had like the staff allow like, I don't know, two weeks. I, I forget what our, I had that up and then I think I just closed it. Um, you know, where was our, our timeline for this year? Um, you know, it was, I don't know. Oh, this one, yeah, so what was it? The first copy of somewhere in July 2nd to 6th was we had distributed stuff to staff, committee chairs and everything. Um, and that wasn't due one was due two weeks, but one was due like a month later. Um, that was the counselor one. Mm -hmm. I think Lynn extended the two week deadline. I just thought there was a lot of time. And then the self-evaluation was in July 10th and we didn't have to submit our evaluations until August 7th. And it just seemed like there was a lot of time between when we received stuff and when the counselors had mm -hmm. to submit things. Um, that I, I guess that's more of the tightening that I felt. And we got Paul's so early compared to when we had to submit that it's almost like if you read it when you got it, you had to reread it <laughs> by the time you were doing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe yeah. April, the all data collection instruments distributed and received, all of that should happen in May. Yeah. And that the managers receive, that we receive the self-evaluation on the manager about the same time we receive all of the, the deadline for everyone else's because we get that deadline and then we can have a week and a half to submit counselor evaluations after we've received everything. So here we're looking at a bit more fine grained timeline, somewhat akin to what, I mean, very much close to what you gave us Lynn for fiscal year 20. I mean, it's in the packet, right? You're looking at those dates. Um, how fine grained do you want this, Mandy, to be? I don't think it needs to be totally fine grained, um, you know, like with dates or anything, but right. like right. a note that says two week response period or something, you know, right. and, and, yeah. and just an order of, or all, you know, Right. Self-evaluation will be due same date that the other data is due or something like that. And right. then two weeks later, counselor evaluations are due or a week later, counselor evaluations are due. I guess one of the questions is how long do we need from the time we receive everything to when we as counselors have to submit stuff? Because right. right now it's like listed as a full month potentially. Um, yeah. And right. it was almost a full month from the time we received the self-evaluation to the time we had to submit stuff this year. And I just felt that was an extremely long time. Yeah. It, it, I, there were some reasons that that happened. One was uh, staff vacations, but um, that's yeah. okay. Sure, no. Um, two weeks reply, uh, all data completed and due to town council. 
by end of month. And so you would receive Paul's self-evaluation and, and all of this data by the end of the month. And during the month of June, you would do your first meeting, your second meeting and set your contract. Potentially, yeah. Yep. I mean, it, it, would, it would mean the vote on the budgets the same day as the vote on the contract. Yeah. By the time we get to the vote on the budget, we really usually are not. It's not a long budget process once we get there. No, it isn't. It really isn't. So I, I'm not concerned about that. Um, okay, so I will do all of these changes and um, figure out how to incorporate this and come up with maybe a memo that is draft and we bring it back to the next GOL meeting and we talk about it there. And then we take it to the council. Yeah. So, so uh, even though we just did late May for everything, we might want to move that to mid-May. I'm just thinking if you think everything's due, then the council maybe gets assumed two weeks or even just assume one week to do their evaluation based on all that reading. Then you need to give whoever's compiling probably at least a week to get it compiled, if not a week and a half, 10 days. And that has to be done a good four or five days before the council meeting in early June, if we want, depending on when the council meetings are. So it might be a better for a mid-May deadline for the return of stuff. Because it might still be a month before you get it to the council in a public form with a draft. I think that's good. That's good. And you noticed I now move this back to the end of April. Yeah. So we do data collection in the last two weeks of April. We provide that data plus the account manager self evaluation by mid May. And then um, that gives counselors uh, two weeks to get their evaluation done. Remember, there's supposed to be a lot of writing to get to that draft. Right. That's tight. I got to tell you, that's tight. It is because you're going to have the first week of May. Then everything's due the first week of May, and the third week of May is when counselors submit their evaluations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be hard for the finance committee members. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. I don't know if that's so so we normally have one meeting in July. Our goal is to have like a July meeting right after the fourth, right? And then try and skip the late July meeting. Right. So if we pop everything two weeks and pop the June goals finalized and the manager evaluation, or maybe you still finalize the goals in June, but you pop the manager evaluation vote into the first meeting in July you're then potentially allowing the counselors to do their evaluations in early June. It still makes it tough for the five members of the finance committee. Yeah, I, I think you leave it like this and if you have to go to July because you may, what you may end up doing is, remember it's essentially a three week, a three meeting process because even if you vote on the night, even if you have the meeting where you negotiate on the same night you finalize the memo, you still have to wait till the next meeting to actually uh, do the final vote because you want it public and out there in case there's any public outcry. So if you can do all of this in June and then, I'm sorry, and then in July, you would vote contract. Again, I want to point out, however, you still have this little asterisk here. Yeah. Which is why getting all the data from the counselors in May for that just in 2020, 2023, it's probably just going to have to move a month earlier. Right. 
Yep. I think we need to be very careful in thinking this through as I kind of maybe piece out the text. If we have a big turnover in council, the one thing that absolutely set is the uh, budget process and the dates. It's in the charter and it's in state law. And if you have a new council with a lot of new members coming in who are taking over that budget process, uh, really need to think about them. I agree, Andy. They'll be saved by the resident members. Do we, um, any thoughts on the order in which these things are done in terms of uh, residents, staff, et cetera? Does that matter? Is it more of just everything needs to be done by a certain date and we're not really concerned about the order? So one of the things that Mandy raised was that, you know, we want to thank, and we don't have to do it now, we could bring it back, but the order in which various, um, you know, evaluations are done um, should be part of this, or maybe it's not so much the order is just the date when they must be completed so that it gets to the counselors in time for them to do what they have to do. These instruments, when I, actually these are all four instruments. This is how are you collecting data from staff? How are you doing it from committees? How are you doing it from the public? And how are you doing it from counselors? You really have to have them all kind of queued up and ready to go. I think we distribute the counselor ones after right. everything else though. I think that was part of my, maybe that's part of where I got, you know, I got this email that said, fill it out, but I had to wait almost a month till I had all the information I could get till I could fill it out. And by then <laughs> you've lost a link, you've done everything. So I think distributing the counselor review should happen later. Right, right, right. Distribution of counselor evaluation form end of month. Yeah. Or at the same time that all the data is distributed to the council, they get their link for the evaluation form too. Counselor evaluation form goes out at the same time they get all the all the data. Yeah. Sorry. So, no, wait a minute. So this is due at the first week of May. This is due first week of May. So we want this at the first week of May. Yeah. along with the staff data. Yeah, any data we don't have. Yep. Okay. I mean, Lynn, you're the one that's looked at when counselors submit it. I've gotten the feeling that counselors tend to submit their valuations pretty much on the last day or the day before the last day you told them that need submitted. Right. The, the <laughs> submit, some do it very early and some do it very at the very end. It's just, um, it, it's it, all over the place. And does anyone tend to do it before all the data is in? No. Okay. No. The, what the pattern I've seen is <laughs> I'm usually dealing with a couple of stragglers. In this case, I was one of them this year. Um, they, you might recall that this thing also met a hit about the same time we redid all the election sites. Sure. So this can be fine tuned some more too. Yeah. Right, and then so at our next meeting, we will review um, this revised document. I think we've made really good progress and lots of good contributions and i think um lynn will will we'll fix it up and we'll we'll review it do we also want to start the process of reviewing the um instruments themselves 
or how do we want to deal with that? I, I, I heard from Lynn um, the thought that at some point we need to look at the actual um, evaluation instruments, um, including, I assume, the comparable instrument, right? I, I think, George, this really depends on what else we've got on our agenda. Um, I know, I understand, but is it something you think that we have to do, we, sh we will do at some point, doesn't necessarily have to be done at the next meeting, but it is something we will be doing. Okay. It has, it definitely, we definitely need to redo the staff one. I think it's, I think it's become a tired instrument. And, but I think if we, I mean, this year, if we move this even to January, good, but the reality is that uh, I've got to do a little homework before we do this or somebody does because um, I think there's better staff instruments out there, and I think we need to figure out how to give the public more of a way to interact with the goals um, so that they, you know, maybe they rate the goals or something like that. I just think we'd get more public response if we did that. And frankly, not unlike the way counselors would be asked to rate, rate on goals. Um, so that they could do a purely a rating or they could do comments as well. Okay. Um, I just want, all I can say is before we're going to do this, um, if I'm going to do it, I need a little lead time to do a little bit of research on other staff instruments and stuff like that. Fair enough. No, I understand. Some um, of that, by the way, may be able to be done with MMA. Oh, you know what? I just realized there is another piece here. Yeah. And right in here, we didn't do this this year, but we have to do it at some point down the road. And it is a salary comparison. Salary. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just needed to put it a year, a year ago, as you might recall, we actually looked at the salaries that other towns were paying. That was because we were also in a contract year. This year, I didn't do that additional research. First of all, Evelyn did it for me. And this year, she was leaving at the time we were doing all this. Right, right. Which, by the way, was another reason we had their little hiccups here and there. Sure, sure. <laughs> we got it done, gang. Now, I, I'm wondering what, I mean, This we can talk about this outside of the meeting, Lynn, but in terms of getting help from MMA or getting help from, what is there, some institute? I ran into them at the uh, convention back in the day when I actually met people. Um, mm -hmm some body that, that actually provides these services. I can dig it up in my file somewhere, but um, might be something I could try also look into just, you know, telling them what we're doing and if they have any materials we can look at or suggestions. Right. But, and MMA, uh, I'm sure has references for other cities and towns. Uh, the McCormick Institute. McCormick has, Institute, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're at UMass Boston. They do some local government work. They actually worked with the Charter Commission. Right, exactly. That's what I was trying to think of. Is it worth reaching out to them, do you think? I mean, I'd be happy to do that if I had sense of... Um, let, let me do it because otherwise they'll charge you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually... I'll just put it on my account. On my they've account. been longtime colleagues. I use um, my counselor credit card. Yeah, right. Um, they've been, you know, they've been longtime colleagues. Um, right, good. So, but... Unless you are saying you want to start on that stuff now, I wasn't going to start working on that. No, I, I'm not trying to, yeah. I, I just want to make sure it is something we're going to do and we will do it right. uh, in, in the future, but not, yeah, okay. And I'd be happy if there's stuff that you need someone to read through and digest and sure. then summarize, I'd be happy to do that work. So if you get something from the Institute or from whatever, and you know, you'd like someone just to go through it and summarize it or whatever, Yep. You can call on me for that. I can help you. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So um, stop sharing this. Okay. And do you want to go back to the agenda? I do, uh, unless there's, um, it's, we don't have much here. Um, the update for bylaws for future consideration, I just put on there. Um, and there's, a, there's a, something in your packet. I don't, basically, is there anything anybody needs to report on? And if the answer is no, we'll just move on. Um, I have some things that I've marked in red for me to do, but me hasn't done it yet. So, um, so, so we were each assigned to look at a bylaw or a group of bylaws. and. I mean, I, I looked at my group, but I guess I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I think what I did on mine, and no one's seen it because we've we put it on, but no one we 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 don't talk about it. Um, I I'm going to pull mine up, and I think what I did was, you know, I I'm trying to figure out what I where my comments are. Um, I'm not even finding mine. Um, but I guess what I was looking at is. Um, what yeah, are we just minute. supposed to be reporting on whether we think it's something we should do now or later or go to a town attorney for review or a different committee review or are we actually supposed to be doing some of the modifications to prevent to, to, to present to the GOL? I think each one had some direction with it, but it wasn't very detailed. Right. Um, is something Pat and I worked on, and Pat particularly, she referred back to the bylaw review committee notes that she had. Right. And so I think, first of all, Pat's integral to this discussion. What my notes say is the purpose of initial individual review is to suggest to the committee what next likely steps are, and then we will go from there. So it's to look at it, Mandy, and think, okay, what would be the next step would it okay. be? And so I think what I'm asking everybody to do is look at their individual. So in the case of mine, um, and I've, in the document I put on the on our SharePoint and on the website, um, I'm supposed to take something to the HR director, I'm supposed to locate a trust document and consult with the town manager, I'm supposed to run something by the town attorney. So those are three things that I um, am supposed to do and, and in the document that I gave you, that tells you what I'm supposed to do, but I haven't done it. And um, what I'm hoping that the rest of you can do over the next whatever is look at your individual um, assignments, individual bylaws, and say, well, the, the, the thing that next step would be X. Don't do X, but just, you know. Okay. And then, I mean, and then we will, next step would be for us to go out and actually do it. So I could actually do some of these things and probably yeah, should. I, I just wanted to make sure we weren't supposed to be like sending it off to the committees that it was really just looking no. for what those next steps are and noting them. Okay. Right. That would be great. It would be nice if people could, you know, in, in their free time, um, look at it and just suggest what they think the next step would be. And then I, I would put that in this document and uh, we would look, and then you could look at it and say, okay, um, that's what I agreed to do. We all see what you agreed to do. And then we just need to say, okay, go ahead and do it. So in my case, the three things I'm supposed to do, you probably would all say, okay, go ahead, George, do it. So uh, we find the most recent table because it gave assignments and had some set of notes. Uh, what I have for you is just, um, yeah. Actually, I picked up a few extra ones too, didn't I? I just realized. Yes, you did. <laughs> it's all right. So I've got some homework to do. Um, so Lynn, you have 3.35 and 3.23 and you know, blah, blah. And it's just a matter of looking at it and thinking, okay, what would, you know, what would be the next logical step? It's really all that, that message, all the other document I have, it just, I believe it was in a packet at some point listed the, um, so Lynn has 3.35 and 3.23. Uh, Andy has 3.31, 3.46, 3.49. And um, all that document says is, you know, look at it at some point and suggest to us what you think the next likely step would be. And then you tell me what that is. I'll put it in the, the, art, the larger document in red, and then I will make that available to everybody so we all know where we stand. So you want us to get them back to you? 
Well, I, I think, or, or you can even, I think it's a Word document. You could probably just go in and enter in red um, what you want to do. And you're going to send us the Word document. It, it's in the packet, should be. It's oh, under it's well, it's table today. of bylaws. Yeah, it's table of bylaws identified for future consideration with updates. And uh, if if you, I know if you want to open it, it's maybe not worth the trouble. But no, nope, I just it, found it. Yeah, if you open it, there's a section called notes, and um, it just lists what um, up to now. I guess it's just me. I don't know, Pat. Had I I had some for mine. I didn't know what I I was just keeping it forward in my own thing to present at a meeting you want us to actually put it into that document well it'd be, it'd be nice to, if you do it then i know you've looked at it okay because i could send you mine that has all uh, my stuff in red and then you could i i'm just trying to figure out what i'm supposed to do with it why don't you just send it to me okay. and i will enter it and that keeps it simple and i have <laughs> okay. that document but for the rest of you if you have a moment i know it's not high priority but we've kind of been sitting on it just send me what you think is what you'd like entered in this larger document and I will enter it. And then at a next meeting or the subsequent meeting, I will make it available to you and we can then say, okay, we've all agreed that these are the steps we're gonna take. Now everybody has to go off and start doing some of this stuff. Okay. Yeah, and Mandy, then you send me yours. And if, if you, any of you, uh, Andy or, or Lynn get a chance um, with yours, look at it and think, okay, the next step would be X. And yeah. if there's no obvious next step, then that's that's fine. It's just, I yeah. have no idea to say, I don't know. <laughs> the only thing I would suggest, by the way, is that if we're going to play with this doc, each of us is gonna play with this document um, and then we're gonna try and consolidate, we should use a different color than red so we don't confuse it. Well, I mean, what I'm suggesting is what I suggested to Mandy is just send it to me. Send whatever it is you think you should do or what your suggestion is, just send it to me in an email and I will enter it into this document. So I will make all the changes in this document. Okay. So just send me your thoughts. And if I, you know, eventually I'll remind you if, if you forget, but um, just send it to me rather than everybody get into it. Okay. Um, I've looked at the minutes. I made one very, very small uh, Scribner change, a spelling change, that was it. Um, Anyone have had a chance to look at them? Are you willing to accept them by consensus? Uh, do you want to wait till then? I mean, it's really up to you. Lynn? I move to accept. Okay, Andy? When did you send them? Uh, when did I? Did I put them? Did I put, I put them? I think they got it. <laughs> we have September 30th and yeah. October. Yeah. They came yeah. later than the initial packet. I'm sorry. So we can wait till next time. Um, but the last, last two days, I guess, is when I got in. Do I want to wait? We can wait. It's all right. I'd rather have you look at them than not. Um, I thought they were fine. But let's wait then. OK. So I will hold off. And they're in the packet now. And uh, when you get a chance, look at them. Um, there are no items not anticipated. There's no public present, I don't believe. No, there isn't. Um, future agenda items, next November 4th, next meeting. We have a human rights declaration that Lynn has forwarded to us. I've actually tried to channel my inner Mandy and I actually took it and tried to put it into the proper form with this, these semicolons and the ands. But the document I think does have a couple places where it could use some work. Um, and I don't, I didn't feel comfortable making the changes myself. So the changes I made were just, you know, formatting dates, things like that. And, uh, but that's on the agenda for next time. It'll be in your packet. Um, and I think I'd urge you to look at it if you ha have a chance. We certainly can do it, it will do it in real time. But I think there's some issues with the wording and so on. It could be clear, it could be fixed. We've done it many times. But I was not happy with some of the things I saw. So, um, so and I also mentioned that there will maybe a small business Saturday resolution coming. Okay. All right. If if that's coming, I think last year when we passed it, we wanted more data about local matters, not just national matters. 
Yeah. Right, George. I think we yes. we went to like where we wanted. You tried to get stuff from the bid or something. Right. Because it and was a very generic like, national resolution last year. Yeah. To be to be honest, I've basically taken it to the bid and the chamber and said, if you want this, please give us a resolution. Okay. And I otherwise, unless somebody else feels strongly, I think it's only if they want it that we should worry about it. And my sense, I'll work with them, but tell them we want local data. I could reach out as well if you want. Uh, it's up to you, Lynn, if that takes something. Um, I talk to them every Friday anyway. Good, so good, on good. to the prior one, since I'm the sponsor, George, do you want me to just do some changes to the, the resolution? The and human rights, the human uh, rights one. Yeah, I, to put a I new think one in. Talk about it. I mean, I, okay. I'm perfectly free. No, you're perfectly free to make any changes you wish. You're the sponsor. I don't have any problem with that. I mean, th some of these blocks are they're like multiple senses. Um, they're just, it's you know. Yeah. No, I I hadn't gotten to fixing it up for you. So if you can just tent, send me I'll what you fixed what up. I did right, and then you and, go and I'll I'll go I'll go at it from there. Okay. Fine, fine, good. Um, Article fourteen. Uh, Bylaw will come to us. So time. that you should see it next time, even though the hearing won't have happened yet, because we're on a tight deadline. The hearing is November 4th in the evening. Both CR CRC is going to talk about it on the 28th. Um, so I'll be able to update you. Obviously, we won't vote on the 27th. Sorry, the 27th. Um, we're not going to be voting on the 27th. Um, because because we have to hold the hearing before we vote on it, but I'll be able to update you next week as to whether there's anything CRC is looking at changing. The planning board is initially discussing it tonight at their meeting. So by next week, we should know, I'll, I'll touch base with Jack, um, the chair, and we should know whether there's any additional changes coming beyond what was presented on Monday's council meeting, at least anticipated. Um, and then I think we need to just consider it in GOL, unfortunately, before the hearings have happened just because of the timing right. in terms of getting it passed. And that is our next meeting. So it yeah. will be on our agenda for number, November 4th. Yeah. yeah, in whatever form it's in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When is the next meeting? Is the 20, the November? Of GOL? Of, yeah. the, GOL meets on the 4th. Right, okay, I got it right then. Yeah, right. I do uh, put on our agendas uh, the next meeting dates. So uh, as long as I don't make a mistake, I haven't made, yet, made one yet. But anyway, so November 4th, and then the next time, and then for the 18th. So um, facial recognition, I sent that off to the uh, to, to uh, KP Law. It's possible that could come back to us before then. Anything else that people, um, you had the small business plus that may show up resolution, local business, anything else people know of? Okay. And we're not going to, and we're obviously we're going to continue our discussion of the timeline. So um, Lynn will get us a, a revised right. version of that. Um, so continue timeline. And we'll not, for the moment, do anything else related to the uh, the review process, the instruments and so on. We'll leave that for a future date. And if people have a chance to look at their uh, future considerations, just send it to me and I'll put it into the, uh, the larger document. I have nothing else. Anyone, um, you know, want to discuss the World Series or anything like that? I mean, any other issues that uh, you want to uh, go raise? Let's hear it for the <laughs> We're split. You know how much Mookie Betts makes? He's he had a salary for three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Is that over twelve years, or is it? Yeah, it's, it's it's not one year, but still, three. He's guaranteed three hundred, and whether he plays another day of baseball, I mean, he's a great. I mean, I'm sad to see him go. Three hundred and twenty-five million dollars to play baseball. Actually, he actually kind of started looking like the real Mookie Betts last night. Yes, he, he yeah, he, the real Mookie's gonna be there, I'm sure, but still 300, what can, what can you, well, I don't know, anyway. That's all I have to talk about. You gonna adjourn? I'm gonna adjourn, it's a pleasure. <laughs> See you all soon. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs>